We're offending everyone. <laughs> Equal <laughs> opportunity offenders. Like like the kindest controversial podcast in the history of content creation. Exactly. If you want to be yes. offended, but not too much, head over to Truth. Talk. Yep, that's right. Da, na, na, na. <laughs> no. All right, so before we get everything started, Jim and I are going to show you what we've been practicing the entire time we've been uh, behind the scenes. Ready, Jim? High five. I'm ready for it. <laughs> a, l- a little delayed, <laughs> but we got it. Oh, my God, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this very this high-tech, high-class stuff. Okay, guys. So those of you listening at home, we high five silently across the internet. Yes. The high high the high five wait, heard round. 12. But wait, wait. There it is. <laughs> you, you'll dub that in later. Yeah. <laughs> Editor. <laughs> Marker. Marker check. All right, everybody. Welcome to the revival of True Talk. So this is Gamer Dad. We got Grindhead Jim and Lady Radar, one of our new Hi, Twitch affiliates. Yep. No relation. No, no relation. No. <laughs> so, welcome back. Um, it's pretty exciting. I have been really itching to launch this for quite some time. Reached out to a bunch of the sponsored streamers and got some uh, big support from Jim and many others who you will see in future casts. Uh, so we have slightly different format going forward than some of the previous True Talks, but... Um, we're we're gonna give this thing a shot. Jim has been a huge help to to figure this Another out. Another fat joke. We're we're two fat jokes unless <laughs> two fat jokes. Right. Oh, oh. I'm a huge help. Okay, he's only he's he's been a little help, guys. How about that? He's a small help. Very small help. Now now, now a penis joke. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Like I can't I can't win. I can't win. I'm losing two. <laughs> <laughs> So first of all, the big question is, is who the hell this guy is and these other people, and where's everybody else, right? So White Shadow and Pims used to run these. Uh, there have been some changing changes in in real life schedules um, and everything. So a bunch of us sponsored streamers stepped up, jumped in, and uh, and we're bringing it back, right? So sure. first of all, yeah, <laughs> Lady Radar's like, sure, I'm here. I'm just here for the ride, right? I mean, that's yeah, yeah. I'm just here for the food. Yep. There's food. I'm here for the walls. And Isn't there food? The, the, the deprecation. <laughs> so it's fine. It's fine. There, there could be food. <laughs> maybe, maybe food. I didn't. I don't have food. Can you send some over? <laughs> it's an ever after. Uh, ever. <clears throat> mind. We had a really pizza, and then the kids got to it, and it looks like someone took a bulldozer and just <laughs> put the pizza in it and it pushed it off of the cliff. I had like chips one, and cheese for dinner. Allegedly, it was pizza at one time. Hmm. I, I had pot roast, but my daughter ate all of it. My two-year-old daughter <laughs> ate my dinner. Why did you give it to her? Because it's cheaper to, to get one big adult plate than it is to buy my size plate and then her kid's plate because she's only going to climb into my lap and eat my food anyway. Mm. Fair. You're trying to cut out the middleman, so to speak. And the middleman's really you. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Fair. Uh, and I'm just giving her a direct line to your food to really... It's just a shortcut to you starving. But but Jim, this is how it works. I go from the middleman to the little man, right? It's a weight loss plan. <laughs> you know, I, I know Zing, people who are another one. like we're just we're offending everyone. <laughs> Equal opportunity down. offenders. Like like the kindest controversial podcast in the history of content creation. Exactly. If you want to be yes. offended, but not too much, head over to True Talk. Yep, that's right. So let's let's kind of run down the, the just just a little bit just so we're gonna we're gonna pause the offensive nature for just a moment and kind of run down what this okay. is gonna be like. So one of the new features of True Talk is we're going to bring in um, a different Twitch or True True Streaming affiliate each week or each each cast. Right, Lady Radar is gonna be our first one, and we're gonna get to know you. So this is all gonna be about you for a little while. So. Yay, yeah. I love talking about me. It's my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> so you'll fit right in. You'll fit right in. 
And we get a couple of other comments or a couple of other topics to throw in along the way. And um, we do have we do we do have the ability to see the stream chat a little bit. Uh, so there, as some comments come up that are kind of on topic with what we're talking about, we will uh, we'll bring uh, some of those comments into the conversation as well. So a little bit of interaction, not not full extreme interaction, but uh, the chat can participate as well. So uh, one of the things that I want to start off with. Uh, is getting to know Lady Radar because that's one of the whole focuses here is is who the hell you are, <laughs> right? So I don't know who the hell am I. <laughs> <laughs> why don't Why don't you tell um, us about your stream, your content, what what got you into Twitch? Uh, I see somebody back there who might have been slightly involved, but yes. So if you can't tell, um, Dayashan is sitting behind me on his own stream. Um, he is really the reason that I am part of all of this to begin with right so um last year he came to me and he's like i want to start twitch streaming and i looked at him and said but why though <laughs> why why would you do that i know what I is do this about? I, what is this he, he really said um i want to do this and i said okay how do we make this work and so i've spent the better part of a year um because his one year is next month um so i spent the better part of a year just kind of being part of these communities, um, the true community, obviously the tavern that we built, um, a couple of different, you know, networking communities that I just kind of found by accident. Um, and then we were talking about going to TwitchCon. And uh, we have a, a partner friend of ours that was going to go to TwitchCon. And obviously he's an affiliate and a whole bunch of other people are affiliates. And I'm looking at these ticket, you know, like levels. And I'm like, but I don't want to be stuck with the plebs. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> It's uh, one like, well, big, I do? I mean, I don't, one big I don't... thing to avoid being called a pleb. That like, <laughs> really is what Twitch is all mm. about. 100%. <laughs> um, so we uh, we decided that we were going to set me up with um, creative streams, essentially. I crochet. Um, I'm currently in the process of making a blanket that was supposed to be for my mother for Mother's Day. Ask me if I finished it yet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Next year's Mother's yeah. Day. Yeah, no, it was supposed to be for this year. I promised her it would be done before the end of the summer. Um, but that's pretty much what I do. I don't, um, we don't really have the tech currently for me to game and stream. Um, and I have so much other like real life stuff going on that I don't necessarily think I could commit to streaming anything other than spending a couple hours crocheting. So, um, that is pretty much what I do. That's what my stream is about. Um, I just kind of sit there and shoot the shit. Um, sometimes I'll be streaming in the background on my couch while Dayashan is streaming over here. And so his stream will hear me sassing him from the background, which is super fun and entertaining. Um, do you ever throw so anything at him while you're streaming? Of course not. I'm a, I'm a loving wife. <laughs> of course I would never do that. You would never throw anything at him. I would never do that. Never. Not at all. Never. never. Not in the littlest <laughs> bit. All right. Um, but uh, he did re rebuild his computer, so I'm hoping that I might be able to like sneak in some playing on his computer of the D2 because I hear that it's super crispy on PC. But uh, it, that is a <laughs> gross understatement. But uh, doesn't you know, play first-person shooters. To... Nodding very enthusiastically and how good that game is <laughs> so yes so that's me in a nutshell how did she get into this nutshell <laughs> wait wait I'm in a box wait 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 there's the top I can't. <laughs> <sighs> okay so you got in because you quite frankly didn't want to be a pleb uh, pretty much okay. I mean it's really it was easy for me to kind of slide into it because I had already spent all of this time building these connections. You know, I've, I've been a part of the, the true community for Christ a long time at this point. I mean, is, you know, through Dan, the dapper and finding you guys and him being a, a sponsored streamer through, through true gaming. It just kind of, I just kind of fell into it. And then I just kind of made my own friends and then, Next thing I knew, I was an affiliate, and my husband didn't even know. And he's like, wait a minute, you're, you're an affiliate? When did that happen? Now, here's the important question Today. that everybody needs to know. Does he subscribe to your channel yet? No, 
He doesn't. Um, and part of the reason for that is because I subscribe to his for ten dollars a month <clears throat> uh-huh. because I want. Wait, I will show you why I subscribe to his channel. Um, oh, this I visual aid for this emote alone. Oh man, yes. salt on a bald head. That is sea salt. <laughs> that is his salty potato emote. That's his uh, tier two emote. Um, so he won't like I won't he won't sub to me or really it, can't sub to me because really <laughs> speaking it's all going into the same thing. It, in, so. Instead of you spending five on each stream, you're spending ten on his. That makes sense. I get it. Yeah, because I really want that emote. <laughs> Not <laughs> so, like, for love, favorite. but for the emote. So. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that works. But uh, today was my 11 month subversary to my husband's, which means that we are closing in on his one year affiliate. So nice. So, you know, first comes love, then comes marriage, then, you know, maybe children, but in every marriage, somewhere in there, subscribing to each other. Clearly. Subscribing to each other. Yeah. Yes. But I'm the one with the Twitch Prime, and I'm the one with, you know, he's the one with the better emote. So we just kind of make it work. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> So, where did the name come from? Why are you Lady oh. Radar? Is there like, is this, is there a funny story behind this or? It is, it is a funny story. Okay, so, um, all right. So I have been, um, in my real life, I do, I used to do Renaissance fairs. Um, it's actually how I met Dayashan was doing a Renaissance fair. Um, and there was a year that we were doing a local parade to kind of drum up um, like hype for, the um the the fair and things like that and uh the gentleman who played our king um his name is frank it doesn't really matter we call him king poofy pants because of the way that his con- that his uh costume was it was looking at i don't know some hot chicks uh, i don't even remember who it was uh, it was just some hot chicks um and so as i'm looking around because you know he was kind of focused on these one hot chicks over here and then i was like well but there's more of them there's some over there and there's some over there and there's some over there and there's some over there uh and so because i was his hot chick radar i became radar and then lady radar and nice See, that was going to be the question was like <laughs> was there a radar to find you or were you finding other women and now I, the, the question has been chicks. answered yes Yes. <laughs> it was me finding other hot chicks. Um, and that was in 2005. So this is a, a persona that I've had for almost as long as my daughter has been alive. That's um, awesome. Yeah. So. Do you, are you still, the follow-up question is, are you still friends with King Poofy Pants? I am. And is he still um, called he is, King Poofy Pants? Uh, only, only in love. Um, he actually um, stepped away from the fairs for a while, um, just because he lived really far away and he had a lot of other stuff going on. Um, but we are still really good friends. Um, you know, we're on each other's Facebooks. We chat all the time. When he comes up to fair, um, you know, we hang out. Um, but he is now known as King Party Pooping Pants because he's not participating. <laughs> no, I mean, realistically speaking, neither are we anymore. You know, we took this year off. Um, we needed a break and uh, so we just we went this year but we don't really work it anymore I'm just old <laughs> I am too old to be out on that field in 110 degree weather in full renaissance fair yeah. okay, can I'm we just... put a moratorium on people making old jokes on the podcast I'm 41 <laughs> okay I will not abide this <laughs> He's 42, okay. so I really can't complain. But it just—it got to be a little bit too much, you know, the the amount of work that goes into it. So we just back to being the baby. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so that's that's pretty much where that story came from, um, you know. And I'm still friends with a lot of our Renaissance Fair people. Um, well, there you go. Kind of live all over the country, so. Jim. You're being called an oldie but a goodie, so you know. I mean, that's one a classic is the term I prefer to have used. Um, you know, so we'll go with that. Right. But I appreciate that. There you go. And Diet is really still older than you, so don't feel bad. <laughs> you don't look. <laughs> okay. Although, just, just before the podcast, we're out poolside. When we're out poolside, the party. Um, <laughs> a lady remarking it at how, how many white and gray hairs I have in my beard. She goes, You look old. I'm like, Thanks, dear. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I really like. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Well, 
you know, moving right along. Yeah, I know. I know. My my, my wife, um, her family has very early onset, uh, like, have graying. So, before she was thirty, hell, when we got married, she had gray hairs. <laughs> so. <laughs> and I am, presume we've gotten progressively worse as the marriage has progressed. Uh, you see what I? Shh. shh. No. Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, I can't hear you over the sound of the bus you've been throwing. He's not watching, thankfully. So. Yeah. <laughs> See, even the chat supports it. There's other people that are younger and have gray hair. That's yeah. true. He's had gray hair for as long as I've known him, so. <laughs> All right, so other question for you. I think it's kind of yeah. obvious, though, but what's... What's keeping you motivated on streams? I mean, is it, do you guys, is it just kind of something that brings you two closer together to talk about your streams and stuff like that? Like, what do you, what do you like about what you're doing? No, I actually hate talking about Twitch with them. I'm not even going to lie. Um, our, our lives just kind of revolve around this, like, thing that we do now. Um, right. So it, it feels it's, like it's obvious. It, it is a hobby for me, but for him, it's something more, you know, and it's it's sure. a little bit challenging because I do a lot of things outside of streaming. It's why while I have a schedule up on my page, I very rarely follow it because there are times when I come home that I'm just I have things to do. You know, I work full time. Um, I teach full time. I'm going back to school in the fall. I just I have a lot that I do. Um, and so. I don't have the energy to sit there and people. Would, would, <laughs> I, I can't. Right. Would this make you lady the off the radar in the fall? No, I'll still be around. Oh, I'll still be around. <laughs> Can we get a groan? Yeah, holding back for those puns, <laughs> man. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And then Joe comes in and ah, knock him down. Um, I'm trying to keep us somewhat respectable. I mean, between, you know, all the all the opening, like we're belittling people, and now you're making these puns. Like, it's like I don't even have to be here. Like, I, I don't have a job anymore. I just sit here with a Godzilla hat and go, well, you got me. <laughs> you caught the tater. Um, but, yeah, so it, it's... It was actually really, really challenging early on because everything was wrapped up in Twitch. You know, every yeah, day right. was something new with Twitch and every day was a new stream. And it was uh, really early on, it was really hard for me to kind of be on board with all of this because it was just very much, I'm sure you know you guys know when you first get into this it's it's kind of hard on your spouses right because you're so focused on what you're doing that it's you think that we care <laughs> and sometimes we do and sometimes we're like no really i'm not enough i um, i am blessed to be in a relationship where if i'm saying things that don't matter i am immediately informed of this and it works out I, really yeah. well, it, well it's, that's it's, what, i mean that, that, I that makes care. it work yeah and there are right. some games that he plays that i just can't be bothered and I'll look at him and be like okay honey I really don't care but okay um you know I just as time has gone on and I've, I've helped build the tavern community with him and I've made new friends you know m of my own not even just through the tavern um and through here but like people that I talked to that came into the tavern because of me not mm -hmm. necessarily because of him um it's been a very interesting experience um, it's been a very interesting experience to have essentially built a channel in a week because that's really, it was whatever from the time that, you know, we said, okay, well, I don't want to be in this group of people that can't go all the places that you can go. Um, I just kind of, from that day until the day that I got affiliate it was seven days. Wow. I had had, yeah, seven days. The tavern was amazing for that true was amazing for that it did not take long at all wow so. and so now diashan's about to hit his one year yep. you're how far behind that when, when did you start um, i actually don't even know uh june 20 something i think 24th i don't know jill's who's in the chat is one of my um super mods so i'm sure she could probably check 
but <laughs> I don't actually know. Um, I wasn't really paying that close of attention, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't tell when I started my first affiliate stream either. I did find a, a nice little website that I can find all my stream history within a year, so... I'll share that. See, my I'll community share. won't let me forget. Like, they'll come in, and then, you know, they'll announce, like, you know, affiliate baby, and then affiliate <clears throat> uh, year, and all that stuff. So, like, they've been really good about, like, making sure, like, they call me mom. Like, mom, we're at this point here, and it's awesome. Like, I dig that they're that invested in it, and it's really cool. They call you mom. Um, Kip. Yeah, they call me mom. It, that's a long story that, that, that maybe needs to be on a different podcast, but <laughs> uh, the short version, it started with a mod, and then it just kind of started. So I get all right. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, mom. <laughs> no, you know. Sure don't. thing, Pam. No, no. Nope, nope. I was just, I just figured I'd try it out. I'm trying to share myself. <laughs> Is this okay? Well, but, but now. Oh, there we go. Jill says six weeks ago. Fair enough. Six weeks. There you go. Well, but, yeah. but Jim, if you look at it now, now you have mom and dad on the True Talk podcast. Synergy. And then there's me. Crap. And. And baby <laughs> and baby radar. And baby radar. <laughs> Mommy and daddy. See, and baby I can radar. I can now pat her on the head, kinda. Man, if I reach <laughs> down, high five for good parenting. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Huh. So this is where you know Tree Dog's going. I mean, sure, we like to introduce you to yeah. to you know our our affiliates, but uh, you know it, it wouldn't be true gaming without some gaming news. Gaming news. So. We we have yes, that. There's some, there are things that happen in the gaming world, and we're going what? to talk about it. It's kind of cray. What? It's kind of cray. I, it's never been done in the history of content creation, but we're going to do it. It does. So, -na -na -na. Is it going to be true? So, I mean, <laughs> that's what news should be. Not we're not going to go on the whole fake nope, news nope, thing. No, nope. it's true gaming. It's true gaming news. That's. Come on, let's, let's, let's keep it on the rails, all right? Uh, one thing that I have noticed that, that Twitter in particular will not stop exploding about is that Monster Hunter is coming to PC, finally. Um, this is a looter shooter that basically it's a love or hate, um, but for those that love it, like I've lost friends to it, not because we disagree, but because I haven't heard from them in about seven months. Wow. Uh, <laughs> they're just like, nice, no, I love any. how I was saying there's one of those like there's games that he'll just sit here and and mm -hmm. yeah, on and them? I'm like, okay, yeah, that's one of them. Right. I don't care. And and to be fair, like <laughs> he tries so hard, I'm like, Meh. personally, I I tried to love it and I don't. And for me, it, it's the the attack system's not my bag, baby. Um, but I think it's a great game, and to see it come to PC. Uh, and, and be able to hit that market, and not just for enthusiasts who want to get that frame rate, though, uh, but also folks that risky, are on PC price. that have never played a Monster Hunter before, because until it came to PS4, I had never played a Monster Hunter before. So yeah, that's a really big thing. A lot of people are really excited about that. Um, other things that I saw was that uh, Far Cry 5 is getting a DLC on July 17th, uh, which is $9.99. So for Far Cry fans, that's that's it that hasn't been out that long. No, uh, it hasn't. So it, yeah, so the, it, it's looking like it'll it'll be pretty cool. Um, it is part of the season pass. So if you already have that, you're all set. Um, I we'll have to go look that a couple up. Things I've seen. Yeah, it should be good stuff for folks. Um, Crew Two is a huge disappointment from the critics, uh, as if that's any surprise. <laughs> um, I, I'll, I'll put it this way: the, I, the one review that I saw said. Crew 2 review. Where is everybody? <laughs> the answer is playing other games. So it's, um, I don't mean to, you know, if you like the crew and you're listening, I'm sorry that the player base is not there for you. I hope that they find a way to bring more people in. But as of now, you're kind of on your own. You know, uh, there's been a big question in, in, in the gaming community over the last several years, like what's being done for the single player the people play by themselves what is being developed and the answer is crew too <laughs> like there you go it got you right there and we, we didn't even the, the sleeper hit of 2018 because it's so boring no, i'm kidding i'm i'm just making a joke <laughs> just, they're just jokes okay stand back it's okay we lost the two crew two um, viewers i have no idea what you're talking about 
with yeah, Betty. All one of them. Be with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, another thing that's been going on is very near and dear to my heart. Guardian Con's coming up this week. Yes. And there's a um, charity marathon they do every year for it used to be two days now it's like a four or five day thing and we're well over the one and a half million mark yeah. almost a two million we broke shattered last year's record it keeps going it go, everything's going to saint jude which is for the kids and they continue to fundraise through the event and it promises to be something really really special every single time they do it they keep getting bigger and uh yeah. so it, it's really cool if you haven't checked it out it's over at twitch.tv slash guardian con um if you're listening to this the week of the, the, the recording here, go check it out. Go check out the VODs if you're past it. it there's their energy is insane. They do some really cool stuff. Like the guys from the DCP, um, <laughs> they're a podcast for the Destiny community. And one of their stretch goals was if they hit, I think it was $50,000, that two of the co-hosts would get a tattoo that would match and form a heart on their bum. And they hit it. Oh no! So now they hit it in have thirty get... minutes, guys. It was like, crazy. One of my one of the the streamers that I watch is a it's a friend of mine is a partner, and she went to Guardian Con last year. She just couldn't this year because she's up in Toronto okay. playing Sandy in Greece. I had to remember where she was. Um, and somebody had come into her chat today and said that whatever that was, they had done it in thirty minutes. Right. Wow. It's been pretty nuts. I went to Guardian Con last year, and uh, they stream all the main stage stuff, and there's a lot of cool programming coming up. So if you're not going to be there this year, check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for a great cause, and it does some things that really shows off what gaming can do positively you know, for children and, and for each other. It's a really unique thing. It's not a Destiny thing anymore. It's all of gaming. They have, they're going to have the guys from Warframe there. The devs are going, the digital streams are going to be there. Bungie's going to be there, a couple other devs. Uh, they're doing tournaments, and there's Artist Alley. And it's, it's it's basically everything like a major video game con has, but whittled down to specific interests. Hmm. But everyone like kind of like intermingles with the tribes and everything. It's a really cool vibe. Uh, I was supposed to go this year as well, uh, but my day job was like, here, have a promotion. You're training the week of Guardian Con. And I'm like, thanks. Great. Thanks. But thanks. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm not going. Told um, you it was gonna happen then. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it it's the kind of thing that goes down. But the point being that it's something that I'm so invested in more than any other event. Um, and it all it takes is like just seeing what's done. The positivity of that community has really grown. Uh, it is infectious. Absolutely. So check it out. So how much have they um, raised so far for this year? Let me look. I actually have them over here all ebbed. While he's looking, for those of you that don't know, St. Jude is one of the very few charities where every penny you give them goes into either researching cancer um, that mainly affect children, goes towards helping the families of um, children who have cancer so that when they go to a St. Jude center, they don't have to worry about Nothing how they're going to pay out. for it. Mm -hmm. They don't have to worry about where they're going to stay they don't have to worry about anything except their children getting better and what they do is just so amazing and i mean really anything that gives that much back because you know you hear about charities that will take a chunk of money for like their executives and stuff like that and st no. jude doesn't do that it just nope. almost every penny goes back into helping those families right. and it's and currently... ridiculously amazing the ongoing uh marathon has raised over 1.7 million dollars that's amazing. One point seven wow. million dollars, and it's been going on for how long? How long has the campaign been couple open? Days. Couple, couple days. Uh, couple three days. days. I think it's been. I think today's day three because I think they're they're playing yeah. up to. Tomorrow's the last day. Yeah. Hmm. I believe. Yeah, because the the con starts on Friday. Uh, on Friday, so they take a, the so the the Thursday is the one break, and then they stream all the main events, and you can continue to to raise money. It counts towards the overall goal. Um, our goal was 1.5 this year because that was, we was 1.3 last year and we want to make sure we hit that but we're way past that and we're going for two so wow. next year it'll probably be a 2.3 goal and, and so on we're going to keep pushing it as long as it can go and 
the guys that organize it are amazing. And and the thing is, the movement is getting bigger than the organizers, which have been their goal. Really cool. That's awesome. Can't say enough good things about it. But less charitable, but also very beneficial to the content creation in the gaming community. There are some new things that have come out for Twitch. So those of you that are content creators yourself, check this out. On Twitch, they've rolled out something called Marker. And they've also rolled out a whole new highlight editing system uh, to where you can edit multiple highlights from one screen. No more of this pop out every time oh, you wow. want to make a highlight. That's really and cool. live, if you you or one of your editors, so you can have a moderator and then you can denote them as an editor as well in your dashboard. Any of those people at any point throughout your stream, if they type in your chat slash marker, they will become a a literal line at, on your VOD where that's supposed to start. So that no more of this having the bot kind of like send a text thing that you have to read and all this stuff. It even creates like uh, Excel files so you can find all this stuff so the guys that do like the seven hour long streams or maybe 17 markers that can just kind of annotate it that way. It's a really cool feature. And then when you combine that with this editor, good good stuff. see i didn't know really about the editor I, I heard about the the marker on the um phone and friday for a stream key last last week yes i think last week um and so i've been curious about wanting to use it but every time it comes up i keep forgetting to do it um <laughs> but let me uh, there's been numerous times where i'm like oh this one thing happened on the stream and right where was it you know if someone asked me hey what was this that you right. talked about yesterday well let me go find the timestamp. you know so the the, the little tech corner tip for you guys if you have a stream deck you can program your stream deck to send a text message or, or a chat message so i have a hot button marker i can make that happen Pretty cool. i don't have a stream deck i barely uh, I have a stream guys <laughs> like, <laughs> i sit on my couch with my husband's laptop and obs might run if Oof. i'm lucky Ooh. <laughs> you can still do hotkey, still do hotkey. yeah there's ways to do it like for example like if you were to make uh, if you have a bot and you make your bot an editor and then you have a command that makes them say that you could do it that way. so like for example using extreme labs bot there you could do a macro key at the top for marker and done done yep good undone all kinds of ways you can do it. yeah really cool i have one button left on my on my stream deck without having to go into the folders and stuff so that might be a marker button coming up soon. <laughs> I think we just heard an official True Talk announcement that his button is now a marker button. There you go. You you heard it here first. Right da -na -na -na. <laughs> we're <laughs> we're getting better. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So maybe I need to do a soundboard on my stream deck that routes through my mixers. I can be like, so we have like a. <laughs> Laugh with a high five. Po post production work. Don't worry. I will find. I will find a high five. Fully. You know. <laughs> Dub that. You know. Oh man. God. All right. Uh, so you, I, I know we already went through some of the gaming news. You went through something that kind of piqued my interest. Um, Fallout Five or Far Cry Five? Sorry, Far Cry. The DLC is it supposed to be post storyline? Are they supposed to interject? some new do we know what what the content is i mean it's coming out next week so the article that i read didn't seem to say that but let me pull it up and see if there is something um because it's a f while i'm looking for that there is a tiny little tidbit that m might rub ruffle some feathers uh the queen phoenix has been confirmed to play the joker in his origin film i'm kind Who? of on board with that joaquin phoenix Yaku uh Okay. Oh, Joaquin Yeah, you know, Mr. Yeah, that yeah. Guy. yeah. Uh, I'm Johnny Cash. That, that guy. Now, any, you know, basically, just think could have gotten anyone other than Jared Leto to play him, and that'd be all right. You know, that's a whole other story. I liked Jared Leto as the as that Joker, though. Like, I don't it think that what he did. Well, that was a great character, and he did a great job acting, but that wasn't the Joker. At some point, though, you have to wonder: is that an actor's? decision or is that the director's decision is that the way it was yes. written like it's both i think it's a little bit of both yeah. of all those things combined because it was clear the director had a certain tone in mind for that film um obviously the actor's going to take a certain degree with them uh there's design elements that kind of contributed to the way that, that character was was perceived um and of course the script i mean the script is what it is i mean um 
a lot of people you know really were into that film because it showed like that love story but it's like i mean that's not a love story I, no it's not it's an abusive relationship and that's not it is kind of yeah. what they're about to a degree but it's always it, been down it's pretty so on creepy one hand, if you think about it right on one hand i was like okay they kind of went there and it was good but like people weren't like and you see all these social media posts relationship goals i'm like are you those are only relationship your freaking goals mind <laughs> oh right no and you see that all the time though so then jim um, best best but joker answer your question best joker hmm? who who's the best joker yeah. oh um depends upon how much i've had to drink um honestly because if, if, if i'm stone cold sober it's jack nicholson if i had a few drinks Heath ledger Easy. see it's Heath ledger for me all the way i think he's really good um i i but also i think when we're talking clearly about, just about the actor portrayal i think that if you gave the same script to jack nicholson and he was in the dark knight i think he would have been just as well mm -hmm. you want to know how i the scar you know, like, it would have been really cool to see yeah. him like go super dark oh my with God, it. Yeah. Um, think about that. So like, but if you put Heath Ledger in the '89 flick, he would have pulled that off too, no problem. And it would have been Fair really enough. cool to see. So I, I feel like both those actors were the perfect Joker for their time, and not that they're interchangeable, but both those actors could have done it. If you put Jared Leto in any of those other places, he would have flopped. Like yep. Yeah, something. I gotcha. Okay, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Right, did we? Know. But let's be real. Nobody likes the new DC movies anyway, except for Wonder Woman because they all suck. Did, did we just? But did, did we just have the uh, LeBron versus Jordan Joker debate? Is that what that was? I mean, sort of. <laughs> so, sorry, I have mean, promised. I promised no sports it. references, but but you know. But you, you, well, you broke that's... the promise. All right, so there you go. So so now I know Joe's promises mean absolutely nothing. <laughs> we've established this. I mean, it's more the Peyton Manning, Tom Brady argument, really. We're not going to talk about that team. <laughs> um, to answer Brady. your question, before we get ben too Roth far off, yeah. does that help? Ba back to Far Cry. Uh, All right, cool. Lost on <laughs> Mars is called is the DLC. It takes the player from Hope County to, to Mars. Uh, it's a protagonist named Nick Rye. Uh, there's an alien invasion on Earth, so it looks like it's post-story. It looks like it's totally separate. Is this kind of like the one I'm of sorry. the other Far Cry games where it was like the really crazy, like acid trip looking heavy metal music? Uh, what, I don't remember what DLC that oh, was. Oh, that was. Um, Far, Cry, Far Cry 4 was Blood. Yeah. Uh, blood, 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 blood Dragon? Blood Dragon. Yeah. Blood Dragon? I think so. Oh. Blood Dragon. We're professionals. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean. So wait, they went from having a game that was in, like, the backwoods middle of nowhere, Montana. To Mars. To Mars. It's not that big a jump if you really think about it. Have you been to Montana? I have not. I really want to go, though. Dude, it's not that big of a difference. The only difference is the color of the hill. I mean, this makes total you know, sense to me. Uh, Unless I checked, you know, Montana had water. I mean, arguably, but I didn't see any. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of dejection and loneliness, though. <laughs> Lots of that. Nice. Like the bars, the bars are like, like you think it, like you know how like in, in major cities you have like, oh, I gotta take this dive bar, like the hipster dive bar thing, where they have PBR and tap. It's like, oh, great, you know. Not like that in Montana. <laughs> like they they willingly and regularly do like the put tomato juice in the beer, like that's their thing, and I'm like, who hurt you? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Because they're not even doing it with good, you know, they're like the Bud Light and put tomato juice in it. And I like, think about how much money the tomato juice costs. I'm like, for that price difference, you could have bought a good freaking beer. Yeah. I almost slipped it. I almost, <laughs> I almost did it. I already did. I, so. Oh, yeah. Right, we're ooh, way ooh, past ooh. that. We're, uh -oh. we're way past that, Jim. We're good. <laughs> Let the obscenity I, flow through you. I told you it was going to happen. Like, yeah, well. I just, it's, it's unavoidable uh, here. <laughs> I keep my obscenities to a minimum at work because I have to. Mm. Once I leave the building, all bets are Fair. off. You know, it's a bad day when the kid comes home from school and says, my teacher taught me this. <laughs> Did you know my kid yeah. turned around one day, I, I was saying something, and I said, happy horse shit, and she repeated what I said, and I looked at her like... I'm going to get fired. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> She's at the age now where where um, she's like the testing out the. Right. No, she's fourteen, so she's testing oh. out like the levels of where she can, oh, like right. where her line is. I didn't she said, "Damn it!" Comment. The other day, and I'm like, "What the fuck?" 
I didn't get to drop <laughs> F-bombs like, with well, my mom minute, I until like... Because... I was in my 30s when I could just drop F-bombs and mom would... Uh, she didn't say the F-bomb. It took me until I was 25 to say the F-bomb from my mother. Oh, it happened to me once when I was 18 in front of my dad. And it was a legitimate, like, it slipped because we were pruning a tree and a branch came down and sliced my arm. And I'm like, oh, you know. And, the, and, my I just, father could and then I realized what happened. The, the arm didn't hurt anymore. Blood streaming down my arm. Didn't hurt anymore because I realized I've said this in front of my father. And I just kind of looked at it and he went, you okay? I'm like, yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. Because <laughs> he, he, he was just kind of like, oh, he took that like a dude. Like, I'm not going to yell at him now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my father didn't care. My mother, though. My mother was very... Oh, Ooh, yeah. My dad and I would watch Richard Pryor or George Carlin. We both get yelled at. This is awful. <laughs> my and mother I... loved Eddie Murphy. Like the, I remember watching, remember watching Eddie Murphy Raw on a rerun with my mother. Mm. And yet, <laughs> yeah, I the remember. The first time I dropped an f bomb in front of her, she looked at me like she wanted to hit me, but I was too old. <laughs> right? You yeah. can't do it. <laughs> Great. So, I mean, but I can't, I mean, I, I swear like a sailor, so I can't really fault my kids for saying, damn it. I was in the Marines, in the I, Marines when I, and I work with a lot of sailors. I think yeah. that these be updated because sailors aren't that raunchy anymore. Ma Marines are the ones you got to watch out. Now. Fine. Now. I swear like one of those then. It doesn't matter. I swear <laughs> a lot. So I can't really tell my kid that she can't say, damn it, when yeah. I'm sitting here calling people. Much worse things. Much worse. <laughs> good, sa good save. Good save. I thought. Right. <laughs> but you know, so, that is what yeah. it is. But um, so, you know, you know, we're obviously talking about news. We're talking about things that are happening right. now. But there's always the everlasting future. Um, I like the like, segue. What? Like the future, like going to Mars. Um, I mean, like you no. can do for nine ninety nine on July seventeenth. That's training to go there which in twenty thirty three. There's actually a seventeen year old that is training with NASA to be the first person on Mars in twenty thirty three. When did I lose control? <laughs> I just went... It's okay. No. It's okay. Can't you it. didn't lose it's it. Okay. I just took it. I'm just reaching out. Just Please. it's okay. Um, not. <laughs> um, but you know we talked about Guardian Con, but the one that everyone you know on this platform tends to love is is Twitch. But what do you guys? Or do you have TwitchCon plans? Do you have TwitchCon yes. rituals? Hit me. I have plans. I have to What's, sit here in my chair and mourn the fact that I'm not at TwitchCon. Okay. John and I are going to TwitchCon. We actually just no. bought our tickets. Um, we had booked our hotel like the day that they came out with them, um, and mm. I booked our flights a few weeks back um, because we live on the East Coast, and obviously. Which con is in San Jose, so we're not yeah. driving that. Um, no. Uh, <laughs> and uh, as but, soon as the tickets went up, we purchased it. I purchased the tickets for us, so we are yeah. actually going to TwitchCon this year, um, which I'm super you, excited about. It's an awesome thing, man. I tell you. Here's the thing, though: as big of an opportunity as TwitchCon is for those that go, it is a bigger opportunity for those that don't. I will tell you a story. Last year during TwitchCon, we co-streamed. Um, several of the tournaments and did color commentary over mm -hmm. them. My channel grew 20% in one day. Wow. Yeah. So if you're not going to TwitchCon, my advice, stream. For the love of Godzilla, stream. No one who is a huge streamer is home. Yeah. We had some friends streaming E3 stuff when E3 was going on. Yep. It um, they got a lot of, of uh, really you know, people, solid views during that. People undersell that. Like when you have those opportunities where you've been cleared to do the co-streaming thing, where you can actually put it in a browser source and really do some stuff and have conversations about things, do it. People want to watch that. They don't want to see the, the chats go. Blah, 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 blah. They want to be able to have a conversation, take advantage of. It. Awesome that you're going to TwitchCon. Awesome. Anyone we really wanted to, to go. So yeah. We're like, but if you're not going, pfft, take advantage because it will work out for you. I also heard it's frowned upon to live stream at TwitchCon. I actually yes. think they're going to end up cutting back on allowing that this year because of all of the people that really complained yeah. about it last year. Like they have, I was there looking was on the website, they're going to have like a separate section for people who want to stream while they're there. Right. Well, they've always had like the, the stream booths where they're set up to actually just do streaming. 
but I think they've taken a step further with the IRL stuff mm -hmm. because people yeah. were IRLing like parties and they were doing all that stuff and people wanted to just let their hair down, so to speak, and just enjoy the party and not be on, yeah. you know, uh, and I can understand that and I support that as well. Plus, it's less, you know, screen time that they're taking up while those of us that aren't going can, you know, but it's true. <laughs> I'm curious to see um, if they're going to just support a lot of the games or if they're going to break into some of the other um, aspects of Twitch, like, I don't know, creative. Um, I know that they had uh, last year. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, who knows? I mean, it's growing a lot quicker than people think it is. It is actually getting um, some good traction. But, you know, they had one guy do a monologue uh, named I Paint Creatures last year, and he called out a whole bunch of, of streamers. Um, in his monologue and just kind of like this is the creative uh, community I'm hoping to see it kind of grow I mean it's it's interesting because on the one hand with watching Daishan play because realistically speaking mostly I just watch him play um, I get to see like the gaming side of things and I, I know a lot about games and stuff like that because of him but on the other side of things you know we're having even here we're having this whole conversation about streaming and things like that but I don't stream games. Mm -hmm. I stream yarn. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, the which game kind of, of you know, life. A really odd first guest to have on this because I don't stream games. You know, I... But I, that's the beauty of the platform, yarn. though. It has mm -hmm. grown so far beyond uh, what it started out as. And uh, you can kind of go in between whether it's music or, or making things or gaming or, or any combination of those endeavors. There's a home for you here. And I, I, I think that um, innovation, no matter which part of the platform you're on, is really key. And, and when you're doing something that's different, that's what stands out. Um, and if you're just good at something and people enjoy you personally, it, you know, those of us, it, it true, like, you're going to hear this over and over and over and over and over again. If you're yourself and you're genuine, that's the most important. doesn't matter if you're a potato at the game you're playing. doesn't matter if you stab <laughs> yourself with a crochet needle whatever. I mean, although if you stab yourself with a crochet needle, you know, you should seek medical help immediately. The point being that you don't have to be, like, highly skilled to be entertaining. You know, you have to be you and enjoy it. And that's what comes through the camera and is can only be the only possible explanation why I'm still doing this after four years. <laughs> <laughs> You've been streaming people... for four years? Hmm? I've been streaming, well, my first stream was five years ago when I started up again in, in 20, uh, whatever year PS4 came out, I was really like kind of tricking oh, it. 2015, I really yeah. hit it. Three solid wow. years. Um, but like, I've been doing it. Wow. Wow. I'm coming up on my one year in August. I think August 5th was my first ever stream, and I feel like it's been forever. <laughs> Get ready for the burnout. It'll hit you in about six months. <laughs> I'm yeah, telling you. I'm reading you. on this side there, and I'm looking at um, Lady Little Nugget talking about being a hot mess in her kitchen. <laughs> yes, husband. <laughs> wow. He's been relegated to a role. Awesome. Um, so we don't want to run too long here. I'm just going to be honest because I see the time yeah. we've been on for a bit. You know. Time flies when um, you're having fun, right? It's a true story. So I'm going to wrap the like my last qu two questions and just one what is it other than what we've talked about what is coming up between now and the end of the year that you are most looking forward for me it is destiny 2 the forsaken expansion i mean that's just you know <laughs> i mean come on i am really um, excited about yeah that. i'm 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 excited and not excited because uh spoiler alert they revealed that Cade dies yeah we know yeah uh, yeah but the thing is I think that's going to be a huge part of what makes it brings it back to what we fell in love with in the first place. Yeah. Kind of, and, and it gives us a dramatic stake that we haven't had in a while. So yeah. I'm, I'm down with it. I'm, I'm going to miss Cade. <sighs> I mean, I find you know, myself I to... wondering if maybe they just, if they just couldn't get Nathan Philly and just keep voicing the character well, and they're not going to replace him. Yeah. Like they can't, no. you can't replace they can't Nolan North him like they did with, you know, Dinklebot. Like they, they're, what are you gonna like do this. there? Well, they 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 killed the speaker in in the campaign of D two, and no one gave a shit, right? Because no one gave a shit about the character. 
care. Like nobody cared about it. Didn't matter. So I see some no. other people talking about interest. Uh, there's Subnautica. I guess some ex- some DLC for Subnautica yep. coming out. That's a game I haven't tried mm-hmm. yet. Um, I want to, but when I play Ark and go diving under the water in Ark, I get really really anxious. So I'm I'm thinking I would probably go nuts playing Subnautica. So that sounds like there's something. I'm really excited. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, what you're saying is you need to get you. Uh, play uh, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider's coming out okay. in September. I totally forgot about that. Um, totally so I'm really excited to watch because I don't play the Tomb Raider games. We I've sat and watched him play them. Um, so I'm super excited for that. Minion. Okay. Right. Because you don't have a headset on. So. Um, there's some there's some things on the creative side that are getting my interest that have me excited. There's a couple of new big boxed sets, uh, lots more as we call plastic crack coming out. Some more stuff for me to paint. Um, they're taking these massive giant robots and scaling them down uh, to much smaller sizes into like um, uh, just making the game a little bit smaller, bringing back another old school game. So right now. A lot of the game production companies that I've been following are bringing back, we'll call them retro classics, like games from the early 90s and late 90s. Um, I'll give you the other quote. Yeah, the yeah da- air quotes. Wait, ready? Ready? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're bringing back some retro classics with kind of like a new spin on it, uh, lining up with the current rule set. It, it would be like if um, when you see some of the remastered editions uh, come out of some of the old classic games, like when they, you know, when they re- redid what Halo remastered kind of thing. It's it's similar, sure. um, so that's exciting for me to paint. Um, but I gotta say, I'm really excited about D2, and I hate FPS games. I hate playing them, but I love playing Destiny, and I'm really looking forward to it. But when the Destiny gunplay is so that much. good, dude, yeah. you can't yeah. you can't not. And they almost killed it's it. Such a fun They game. almost killed D2. Uh, they were this no. close. No, no, but they really they really did though. They well, really think did. Think of it like when this. D2 first came out. It's like, well. They fixed all of the things, you know, when D1 first came out, there were a lot of issues with it, right? And we, right. sorry, we all knew that there were a lot of issues with it. And we kept playing because they kept fixing things slowly but surely. You know, when House of Wolves and Crota's End came out, they, they added some really cool shit because the original D1 didn't even have a storyline. And then they come out with Taken King and it was fantastic. Right. Yep. I really want Forsaken to be D2's Taken King moment. It'll be because... way better than that. Because what they're doing with it is such the uh, thing like this. Destiny One wasn't even really done when it came out, right. and then they spent all this time getting it to where it needed to be. And then when D Two came, when they were developing Destiny Two, it was especially now. It is very clear they're like, look, when they say they want to earn the number two, the sequel title, they want to make something really different. They just swung the pendulum way too far, and I would postulate that. The cool things that are coming out of the Forsaken would not be possible had they not taken that huge risk. And, for example, like the, the weapon slot thing, mm-hmm. like which is a huge innovation right now, what they're about to release, right? which is anything in any slot for the most part. And the only thing that, that makes it different is the ammo type. So there's some really cool things. But we would never have gotten to that point, and we wouldn't have been able to experiment with all these different differences if they hadn't done what they did with the weapon system to begin with if yeah, but nobody wanted them. what they did with the weapon system nobody wanted shaders that right we but the thing is if they would have just had primary special and heavy we'd have been happy we wouldn't have said a damn thing and we wouldn't be getting this this three shotgun possible thing coming hmm. but i see i don't think we needed three shotguns personally i think the way that the weapon system in d1 was perfect i don't think that they needed to fix something that wasn't broken. And I think they gave us a game early on that they thought was going to be so excellent because it had a story and it had all this other cool shit, but it didn't, they missed the mark with a lot of the stuff that they changed that they didn't have to change, realistically speaking. So I think them giving us, you know, any weapon in any slot, they're doing that because they have to do something different. They can't just go back to what they had done because now we would say, oh, well, now you're just going back to D1 because well, nobody they're doing can ever it be because the community very, <laughs> very loudly and collectively and on top of the, the summit that they have with the community where they had direct feedback, they said, here are the things we can do. We said, we want this. This, this sounds cool. And they're try- the thing is you cannot have innovation without risk. It cannot be done. I am not going to sit here and tell you that Destiny 2 was exactly what I wanted when it came out. It was not. But I have boy, still did played they figure it, it out know, almost quickly, every day since it came out. 
I've been a huge critic of it, um, but I love the game. And I, I although I am very unhappy uh, with where it was, I feel that it did facilitate this where it's going because they tried some things, they took some risks, they made mistakes. It happened. If I only ever got what I expected out of a game, I would not be as entertained as they have the potential to do every time they try something new. But I don't think they really tried anything new. I think a lot of what, I mean, they did to a certain extent, don't get me wrong, but I think what we got with Destiny 2 to begin with was not, went back to almost them giving us an unfinished game. There were a lot of problems with Destiny 2 that didn't need to happen. There was a lot of things that, you know, we got in the original, you know, day one release of Destiny 2 that we didn't need. That I understand what you're saying about, you know, without risk, there's no innovation. Totally get it. I work for a university, you know what I mean? Like, you have to innovate. But I think some of the risks that they took were probably worse than if they had just given us, you know like the Iron Lords continue, well, you know yeah, what I mean? If, we, if, if they'd have just continued on with what Destiny 1 was, it would not have been a sequel, is the bottom line. Um, but I do feel they went way too far in a different direction and try and make something different. There was a, there was a lot of huge errors, uh, but I'm looking back at it, it's like, okay, I'm not saying that this these new changes justify the old ones, but I, but I can understand where they were coming from, what they were trying to do. So it is what it is. But uh, this is not Destiny talk. Well, I, no. I, I was just going to say I'm super <laughs> excited about the fact that since we've got, what, a couple more months before the game even releases, that's several more casts of arguing about Destiny 2. Yes. I mean, we, we can actually just dedicate and we'll have, you know, Lady back. And, uh, yeah, I would we'll happily argue about that for an hour. Especially once it comes out, like I will happily sit here and, and argue about it. I'm really excited that Forsaken comes out. Forsaken comes out in September, right? That's correct. I think. Yes. Um, I'm really excited that it's going to be something that we can play for um, the charity stream we're doing in the fall. Not that I'm going nice. to, I mean, yes, I'm going to sit here and plug this. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, we've, we've got your upcoming events, right? That's, that's, we've yeah. got that. We are super so excited. So let's go too. into that. It's like, what's coming yeah. up? What you, yeah. What are you excited uh, for this year? <laughs> so we in the tavern, um, the tavern community that Diashan and I built, with um, a few other um, affiliate streamers, we had done a charity stream in May for Stack Up, which was an amazing event. We had done, we had raised a shit ton of money. I want to say like fourteen thousand dollars for Stack Up, um, and so we decided that we wanted to try to do another charity stream this fall. Um, this fall, we're doing something a little bit different because um, we wanted to do something that was a little bit closer to my heart. Um, his through mine is um, we are going to be doing a charity stream in September to benefit ovarian cancer awareness month. Um, There's a charity, the ovarian cancer research fund Alliance, which gives the vast majority again of the money that is raised for it into researching ovarian cancer. Um, It ovarian cancer is like a 30% five year survival rate. My grandmother only made it four. Most women don't know they have it until they're in the end stages of it because it's what we call the silent killer. Um, And so we are raising money for that. Um, Some of the people in the chat today, Jill's one of my moderators, um, Witty Little Nugget, another one of my moderators. Um, A couple other people are going to be making teal colored things. Um, Let me find my boxing on. And while she's doing teal covered things. Teal covered things, yeah. Well, while yeah. you're pulling all that Sorry. up, we're going to go ahead and get some of the pertinent information for links and put that in the description when we release yeah. uh, the podcast, just cool. to make sure that's out there. Absolutely. Yeah. And I will get you um, all the links to the uh, to the charity and things like that. Um, so I believe we are doing that, and don't quote me on this because um, we might have to change the date. I believe we are doing that from the 20th through the 23rd of September. Um, um, my hair will be teal. Um, you know, we're going to be breaking it down. We actually are working with OCRFA to actually get them on Tiltify. They weren't until I reached out to oh, them. Awesome. That, that'll be a big um, help. Yeah. That's huge Good. for streams. Good. Yep. Um, they are right now just waiting for um, their finance department to figure out the payouts on the back end. So right. like when Tiltify gives them money, how do they want to get their money? Um, so we are really, really excited about that. I am 
so blessed and so proud to be part of the tavern community. They are all coming together to do another charity stream and they don't even, you know, most of them don't have the kind of tie to ovarian cancer that, that Dayashan and I do. And so I'm really, really proud of my community. I'm really, really blessed that they are, you know, kind of backing us in this. Um, so that's really exciting for me. Why is there a bug on my screen? So <laughs> Nugget's going to learn to crochet for it. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Well, I, I think that, I think that's awesome. That's definitely something to look forward to. And that is, that does sound like it's right around the time of the D2 release. So, um, you know, you'll actually have another avenue as kind of a plus with the renewed interest in D2 coming out at around the same time. You might have more viewers coming in, not even realizing you're doing a charity, but seeing D2 gameplay and then, oh, wait, we're doing charity work. You know, it's always fun to see people fall into a stream and then get that extra bonus uh, of participating in the charity. So. If I can separate Dayashan from his computer long enough, um, I might even be able to do it on PC. We'll see. Hey, maybe. <laughs> well, thanks, thanks, for the, <laughs> thanks for the plug on that. I think that's going to be a really big, solid charity event. Um, Thank and, you for letting yeah, me. I appreciate we it. We will share all the information that we have available um, into the podcast description. Jim, real quick, what are you excited about? I know D2, but what about a movie? What I, movies you got? They've already come out um, the ones that I was most excited <laughs> Star is born is coming out this fall. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, honestly, I I pay so little attention. Basically, if it's not a Marvel movie or a Star Wars movie, I don't care. And then I'll event or a Godzilla movie. Uh, and eventually I'll hear about it because you know someone in the house will be like, "Hey, we gonna check this out." Okay, cool. We need a Godzilla um, account on the screen we- later, by the way. <laughs> Very good. I mean, anyone that knows my stream, anyone from the Grind fam knows Grindzilla is king. Mm-hmm. All hell gone. Um, but at the end of the day, like, I I tend not to really get too wrapped up in any other media. Like, I kind of just focus on what I'm doing. Um, there, there are like, you know, even music. Like, I was a musician for years, and uh, there will be bands I'm, like, heavily invested in, and I will hear about a new album, like, a week after it comes out. And I'm <laughs> like, what? 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 <laughs> Um, well, but the, for me, like, that's a horrible question to ask me because I'm just like, mm. I mean, nothing. They're like, what were you excited about? I'm like, Destiny. That's it. You know, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Um, you know, there, there's stuff that's coming out that looks cool. Like, okay. Something that just came out that I was really excited for was a Vive game, okay. a virtual reality game called Budget Cuts, um, which is a great, great, um, stealth simulator awesome stuff it's like uh this kind of quirky version of like a splinter cell very cool stuff with a teleport command uh, mechanic um it's a great game if you have a vibe just just buy it just buy it the demo was amazing i started doing the speed runs of it and it you know for me my size ducking and stuff was not easy <laughs> but uh you made your but own in all seriousness like but if you're into to the virtual reality and you have a vibe get it and watch people that make content a really, really cool game i mean it hasn't it just came out though so it's that yeah. really cool. but i'm looking forward to seeing more content on it i don't know I th- i'm i'm looking forward to the marvel movies you know they've got what, venom right yeah that's not a marvel movie sorry yep. nope Let's see fine i'm looking no. forward to the sony movie venom is that better? Okay. Just we... that, that looks like it'll be a nice distraction. Yes. Yep. But don't even get me started on this. No. Nope. Don't. Um, it's gonna okay. it's gonna end, end well. I, I'm I'm looking to Avengers four since the title has not yet been named, but we think it's gonna be. In, but that's not coming up this year. Next though, right? year. Uh, but it's we're almost through this year. Um, I don't know. Fair. All the movies that I'm looking forward to that aren't already out yet are 2019s, right? You got episode nine. Yeah. Let's close out the whole yeah. the, the trilogy of trilogies, right? Let's just close out star wars um and hopefully be done with it forever because at this point i'm tired of it they, they could go on for years with that though they could I know. and they will and they, so just just own it yep. now it's, just it's, it, i didn't even go see solo because i was looking at the trailers for that and i'm like eh. it actually i heard was a lot better but yeah like the, the solo um ant-man and the, and the wasp um black Panther. i haven't seen it yet i haven't either um yeah, okay. either. i haven't even seen infinity wars yet dude what are you doing with your life Moving to Texas? Fair. I moved, oh, when I moved fair. to Texas, that, that was a thing. Fair. <laughs> so, um, you know, I need to catch up on some of the Marvel movies, um, but, you know, it's just hard to get out of the house with the kiddo, right? Just. Yes. It's. Very much so. 
I, I would rather play games with her, run around the house and do crazy things than go stick her with a babysitter for two, three hours. So, um, but uh, the movies I want to see are out until next year. And I might not see the movies that are out now until next year. So, <laughs> you know, it's right. Um, so, but we'll see, uh, you know, D2 is on my gaming radar part, pardon the pun intentional slip, but, but um, yeah. So I'm really excited for a star is born. I know it sounds so silly because it's yet another remake that probably didn't need to be made, but that's what I'm excited for. Yeah. So, so. but I guess, I mean, that that's it for me. That's, that's what I got to look forward to is, is movies that I might actually be able to sit on the couch and watch <laughs> sometime in the future. Maybe when I'm retired from, <laughs> I know how that goes. So, you know, anyway, um, Everybody going to TwitchCon. I hope you enjoy yourselves at TwitchCon. Everybody staying at home and heed Jim's advice. Uh, put your butt on a stream and uh, and and run Do it. it. So it'll, it'll pay off. I'm definitely gonna go look for that TwitchCon schedule to see if there's any kind of creative content for me to recast because um, it would be awesome to see that kind of community get a little bit of notoriety. And uh, Radar, good luck with your charity coming up in September. Thanks. Yeah. So. All right, guys. I think we uh, I think we made it through this one, the the revival. Um, I think. Would you say, Jim, that we're off of life support now? That it we're fully we're fully alive. It's true talk back. I would say so, one hundred percent. Like I'm not going anywhere. I mean, I will be after the the cast is over, and I'll be back the next time I'm here. But... Yes, sure. Yes. Is anybody really <laughs> here, Jim? <laughs> um, we are one consciousness experiencing it. Oh. Radar, thank you so much for tuning in and being part of this with us and helping us bring this back. Thanks for letting me be a part of it, guys. I'm really excited to have been here. Yep. Um, it was a lot of fun to have you. Great. Yeah, True Talk will be back next week, guys. Um, we'll record another hour session then, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it and you'll tune in next week. But thank you guys very much. So we'll be back next week, but make sure that if you have a podcast topic you want us yeah. to discuss on the show, email us, truetalk at truegaming.com, or... Go to our website, truegaming.com, and social media links to contact us. Remember to subscribe to our channels for episodes via YouTube, Twitch, iTunes, Spreaker, or SoundCloud. Jesus, that's a lot. <laughs> hey, we are everywhere. <laughs> and we're spreading. Mm. All right, guys, say goodnight. Bye. Good night, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah.